Phew, I'm tired. Weather's changed, so that means that I can be out in the woods, not just sitting in the woods because of the heat, but now I can work in the woods. So, uh, I go back down in there and clear some of the underbrush so, so there's enough, enough room for... Got to cut back some of the trees so some of the trees can grow healthily. Anyway, I'm trying to make a uh, cut back on the woods some so there can be a bigger yard for the dogs. Uh, we do have bears and wild cats out here and foxes and we have cats and some small dogs. So I'm trying to get the forest cut back some so to keep it safe for our little animals to kind of wander a little bit further. At the same time, talking to the wild things and say, please back up, give us a little more space. So, anyway, I thought I'd come in here and talk for a minute. I had somebody ask me what my idea of 5D is, and I've encouraged you guys to think about and speak up about what 5D is going to look like to you. And the reason that I've done that is because hopefully um, I've convinced you all that your uh, perspective on this life, or any life for that matter, or any experience is unique to you and it's based on um, your past um, events that have happened to you both good and bad belief systems that you hold in place for this lifetime as to as to how you perceive the world around you and that is very 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 true well the same thing is true in 5d now I would say probably four or five years ago I was pretty much convinced that I was going to hit 5D, uh, go to the place that I needed to go to, step outside of time space, and go back to where I came from. But the closer I get to 5D and the more open conversation that I've had with Gaia, um, the more that I'm thinking maybe I'll stick around in time space in 5D for a while at least. Uh, and y'all have heard me talk about that in, as we go up in vibration, then, um, time becomes different. It like stretches. So like in lower 3D, what you look like in, at say 20 in, uh, mid 4D, that's what you will look like in 60s. The same you looked in 20s you'll look the same in, as you do when you're 60 years old and then in mid 5d right before you step outside of time space uh, what you look like in at, at 20 in mid 5ds you will look like that at 200 so can you see how that changes so that happens and of course you can speed up in 5d you can speed up time, slow it down, bounce around as much as you want. By the time you get to mid 5D where you can step right outside of time space, you will be able to go in time space however you want to. You can move around in time space however you would like. Um, all the, uh, by the time you're really you've got your foothold and you're really comfortably in the vibrations of what I call 5D, then you, I would no longer be going to 4D at all, the frequencies that are in the fourth dimension. So I wouldn't go there at all. They'd be 5D and above. And uh, yeah, and what that would look like to me is, uh, I see, I remember, I, I remember of a sort, I can go to a place where I saw Gaia um, in 5D before as she stepped into time space and started moving through time space. And I can see that from a time space perspective outside of the time space perspective. So I can, well, the easiest way to describe it is seeing her in planetary form uh, being formed, see her in uh, earth form, the planetary earth form, and then see her deteriorate over time. And then as she comes back out and uh, heals back to that 
the way that she looked when she first became a planet in the um, and became very physical, which was above 5D, but it, it really solidified really perfectly in the mid ranges of the fifth dimension and how beautiful she was at that point. So I think I might hang around um, on the planet in 5D uh, once I'm safely in 5D and they're solid and I'm, I may stick around for a while. And the reason why I'll stick around for a while is that kind of physicality um, I have done or I've been on uh, planets or places where I have interacted with beings that were at that vibration and they were in physical form and maybe i was still what you would consider seeing a ball of energy uh, but i was interacting with people that were in physical form on that vibrational level and that was enjoyable to me so i might stick around i haven't made up my mind yet i'll decide whenever i get there chances are pretty good that i'm going to stay there uh, and and look around the planet Earth. I think it will dis de depend on how much of the planet I see in this human body before I go to the fifth dimensional frequencies. If I have not seen all of the planet yet, uh, by the time I get to that point, I'll probably stick around for a while and check out the rest of, of the planet in all of the different areas of the planet as well. So I'm, I will probably stay on planet earth until i do see all of planet earth in this physical body and then i'll leave so whether that's before or after 5d that's probably what i will do and then of course i will want to interact with the the beings that are have just come out of the fourth dimension uh, and some of them that are so to speak, coming down to the fifth dimension, I'll probably have some discussions and want to interact with people from this human body's uh, perspective to kind of share what I experienced here with both the ones that are uh, moving out of this uh, creation and those that ha are moving down into the lower dimensions, the lower frequencies, the lower vibrations. Because I think that will be interesting and fascinating. Uh, yeah, and I've got quite a bit yet to share with Stephanie and a lot of the, uh, what I call PRISM children. Those uh, kids that have been born in 2012 and beyond. Uh, depending upon how much time I want to hang out with those folk. So, I have tried to stop planning so much. And because that is uh, a big trap for me, uh, because I am a big thinker and a planner and a note taker and a, a list maker. So I'm trying to avoid all those things to stay out of my mind so that I can stay in the flow and access that data. I think after I died and came back, that was my, my most, my biggest challenge was in shutting up my brain because my brain like school was always safe. I could always go into uh, my thinking self and be safe from all the dangers that were in this physical reality. So I used it, my brain and thinking in my list and figuring things out as a place to go that was safe. And uh, so I had, to, I had to stop doing that. And so now I really, really try not to do that. So for people who ask me questions about how things work, I will give you a really a basic outline as to how things work. But ultimately, it's like I've said before, uh, mathematics, you can see how things work through a mathematical eye, through a physics eye, through a, a astrology eye, a geological eye. You can see parts of how everything works through those the, from those different aspects, those different criteria, but ultimately it is not one or the other. It is all of the above and then some. So I try not to get myself too caught up in the how things work because I am at risk 
for bringing myself down vibrationally with thinking too much. And I, as I've told you, I can't access or raise my vibrations as fast as I would like if I am thinking too much. So I try not to think. I try to uh, intuit, uh, feel my way, not think my way. So I'm practicing what I tell you guys to do as well. So as I feel my way through my last years on in the fourth dimensional planet Earth or fourth dimension in this creation altogether, as I do that, then I'll be um, intuiting my way along the way. I will be going with the flow, so to speak, as this happens. So I will be guessing at this, but ultimately I will leave when it's right for me to leave. And if I try to leave or go too fast, then if there's a higher self, higher self plan that I'm not aware of yet, then what will happen if I try to move too fast is I'll get knocked back by something. Something will happen and it will lower my vibration. And now I tend to look around and go, oh, okay, so that was moving too fast. So I'm not, it's not time for that yet. And I back myself down. So now I've learned to read those things a lot better. But what I'm looking for and what I see is I see uh, 5D is much brighter to me. I can see it better. My eyes improve. Uh, so kind of the, there there's a merging between what I can see with these physical eyes and what I can feel or uh, know those vibrations. There's, they, they kind of come together. They merge so that I can see more with my physical eyes and then I can now. So they, they kind of merge. I have a feeling, pretty strong feeling, that my eyes are still set on translating things at a certain vibrational level. So the higher the vibration gets, the better my vision gets. So my eyes, my physical eyeballs are not set to translate the lower vibrations for whatever reason so i suspect within five years i'm going to see my vision uh, begin to improve and with that improvement there will be a clarity but on top of that there will be a vibrational seeing this as well so that everything uh there's nothing that's still, there's nothing that's static. That tree is not static. It moves all the time, even though it looks like it's, it's sitting still. As I look at my window, it really is not that everything is moving and it never stops moving, even if it's quite subtle. So I'll be able to see what I, I see in 5D is I'll be able to see that movement and it'll be a matter of very subtle movements to very extreme movement that I will be able to, like they say, I'll be able to see songs. Uh, when someone sings or plays an instrument, I'll be able to see the songs in the air that I will absolutely be able to communicate much better with all beings on the planet, whether they've come from uh, other places, other planets, other universes, or outside this creation altogether to beings that are on this planet. And although I'm pretty good at communicating with them, everybody that's here right now or those that come in, I want to be significantly better at it. And I think once I'm here and we're all communicating like that, I might be, I might decide to stay um, on the planet Earth longer uh, than I think that I'm going to right now, or certainly what I thought I would do five years ago, that I can see there's a vibrational shift of this ability to communicate better. So as the communication skills improve amongst everyone, and as my vision improves, then I think I will be more likely to stay on this planet longer. That... On the other side, there's just uh, a lot more colors uh, than here and that has been in my life. And I have noticed between now and when I died in 2008, there's a significant difference 
in the amount of colors that I see and the brightness level that I see uh, <clears throat> that I did a decade ago. So I know that that's going to improve rapidly from this point on. So I will probably stay around because of that. Uh, a lot of the painful vibrations will be gone in 5D. So because of that, there's a good, good chance that I will stay around longer. Um, I, I do remember very vividly being able to create things instantly. So I don't know that that will fascinate me as much as it will perhaps other people. Uh, instant manifestation and instant unmanifesting is uh, very much the norm to me. So I probably won't stick around because of that aspect of 5D Earth. Um, what I'm going to be much more interested in is, is communication between all of the beings here, myself. So that is what I will see on this, on this planet. I suspect that there's going to be a lot of interest in instant manifesting on all kinds of levels that I probably won't be as, as interested in. Um, yeah. What else can I tell you? What I'm looking, what, what my 5D earth will look like. I know the process in getting there is, uh, I think different for me than it is for most everybody I've talked to that I'm skipping, you know, I can immediately go to, okay, let's give an example, Donald Trump. That's been brought up a lot in the videos I've put out. Uh, most of the time, interestingly enough, the people who comment, who do bring him up on that follow me don't, don't like Donald Trump. Um, I do like Donald Trump and I did, uh, vote for him uh, primarily because I know quite a and I probably don't know as much about him and I'm not going to go look so don't ask but I know a great deal about Hillary Clinton and uh, yeah I do vote every time I can vote and there's absolutely no way that I would vote for Hillary Clinton so that kind of left it to Trump so, because uh, Hillary Clinton, in case anybody wonders, she absolutely is involved with the uh, uh, on the timelines that I've been on. Now, you know, there's, you know, I don't think any of you could have accessed any timelines where she wasn't uh, directly involved with uh, what you classically think of as the bad guys uh, in a very real way. And she's been with them and involved with them since she was very young. So, as you guys know, I don't look as good, at good or bad, but uh, the side that she's been working with, uh, they are low vibratory. They're the ones that want the earth to stay at a very low vibration. And since I want to be on timelines where the earth is on a higher vibration, then I absolutely could not vote for her. So, uh, yeah. And then I'm very, very good at looking at anything when I go out and I look at the news I'm very it's very easy for me to tweak it to uh, if the news as the news does gives us the worst case scenario I can very quickly change that to a good thing so if Donald Trump has said something stupid or uh, they find a recording of him doing something stupid it, it doesn't take me but a second to flip that to something that was misunderstood or how I can put that statement in a different light leading to a timeline where uh, Donald Trump is uh, magnificent and uh, I would have a hard time doing that with uh, it's it's possible of course, of course there are infinite timelines but I would have a hard time doing that with Hillary Clinton I would have a hard time doing it with the Vatican I would have a hard time doing it with um the Queen of England or any of that lineage, any of the of the kings and the queens across the planet. Uh, I would have a hard time doing that with, say, Podesta or uh, in, well, any of the crew. So because they are so, so strong uh, vibratorily in 
the timelines that I have lived or any of them around me, that it would it just take too much effort to tweak those into being uh, good good people. Uh, whereas Donald Trump, I know very little about him, so it's very easy for me to uh, sit, visualize him as doing the right thing and doing a uh, raising his vibration and um, making him tied to a higher vibratory United States or uh, yeah so and it's easy for me to do that with somebody I don't know here's blue say hello blue say hello blue blue say hello blue blue I know so anybody that I have a uh, history of or they were really really strong when I was in my lower vibratory place then I just uh, try to avoid thinking about them. Remember, we only have room for 2,000 bits a second. So it's really easy for me to, uh, it's easier for me to deal with unknown people or unknown people, places, or things rather than to bet my head against the wall and fight against, by, by tweaking things that I may or may not have really strong belief systems around. Even though I can back it up and I can say in my mind, okay, that's just a timeline. They're creator God. That was the role that they played and that's cool. And I can do all that. But if I can very quickly move to something else and raise my vibration, then that's what I'm going to do. Absolutely, that's what I'm going to do. It's just quicker. It's just faster. It's my way of being a little bit happier. Um you know, I don't go hang out with my family members. I don't hang out with my father um, at all. I don't do that because it would just not make me a little bit happier, a little bit happier. From here, from a distance, I could say, yeah, he's a creator God, and it was all meant for a reason, and I understand that. I even understand how it all happened with me personally. But... It does not help me be a little bit happier, a little bit happier to go hang out with them one-on-one. -on -one. Okay? So, yeah, I try not to do that. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to, um, you know, I know, I know I've talked to a lot of homeless people, lots of them. Uh, they're in the, they come in the ER quite a bit. And there were a great number of them that told me that, they were homeless by choice, that the freedom that they experienced in not having to deal with the job and the bills and the, and the, and the, and the, that, um, and these were people that did not have addictions and were not mentally challenged in some way, that they had chosen that lifestyle because the other one was just too stressful and uh, they didn't really care anymore what people thought of them. And they just would rather be free. And down in the South, it is so temperate that they certainly easily could live uh, in a homeless state successfully without putting themselves at risk. So uh, I have talked to a lot of them. And so it's very easy whenever I happen to cross or something goes across my the news channel or whatever, where it talks about the homeless, it's very easy for me to think of them and visualize that, yeah, they're happy where they are. Uh, they chose that. So I can stay away from feeling bad because of uh, people that are homeless because they don't want to be. And by doing that, by visualizing all homeless people as doing that by choice, then I'm that much closer to an earth where, um, first of all, all homeless people are there by choice and are happy and free. And then very quickly after that, take the homeless that are happy and free to the creator's God status where they manifest and unmanifest things as they want to. Okay? So the reason why I don't go into exactly how I get to 5D moment to moment is mine changes moment to moment, as should yours. And as I go through my day, and depending upon what flashes in my line of sight or comes into my way of thinking, I will tweak it 
um, by being very, very, very acutely aware of whether how how did that thing come into my line of sight, into my way of thinking in the moment, and how can I if it I, I'm very aware that it takes me down a notch, and I don't want that. So how can I get that up a notch to be happier? So these examples that I've given you are not examples for you to copy per se. I'm just telling you that with my history that this is the way that I personally become happier and happier and happier. And that's why in these videos I've given you suggestions on how to get happier and happier. But ultimately it is your job to be extremely self-centered in order for you to get the fifth dimension. Because nobody can do this for, for you and you can't do it for anyone else. So I think one of the best things the, the bad guys have done so successfully is they've convinced everyone that to be self-centered is a bad thing. Even though we talk about centering ourselves and becoming centered, and that's a good thing. But the word being self-centered is a bad thing. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't that interesting? And you'll see that in that tweaking, tweaking, taking a higher vibration down to a lower, lower, lower level, that that's frequently how it's done, is they'll take a good word, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, until it has negative connotations. Therefore, they'll take a high vibratory thinking or a thought or concept and tweak it to the point that it becomes a lower vibratory concept. Okay? So, for me to say, I want you to be selfish, I want you to be self-centered, and that this is a good thing, is just like the many things that I tell you, that things here in 3D, 4D Earth are upside down and backwards. And because they are so upside down and backwards, it takes a moment-to-moment -moment assessment of yourself and, how, and where you stand vibratorily for you to get yourself tweaked to go a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. And if you stay in the moment of assessing where you are moment to moment, you really don't have time to go back and whine and complain and get centered on past traumas. Because it is a full-time job just walking through and taking care of business moment to moment to moment, on the things that you've got to do, making sure that you've got food or your job or paying your bills or taking care of your pets. It's a full-time job doing those things and being a little bit happier, a little bit happier, a little bit happier. If you do just those two things, taking care of this human body and what you need to do for it and any responsibilities you feel you have and being a little bit happier, a little bit happier, a little bit happier. If that's all you're doing, it's a full-time job to do those things. And if you do them um, like I'm asking you to do them, you simply do not have time to worry about past traumas or being caught up in anybody else's negative storyline. Okay? You don't have time for it. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to be, your life to be yours, this time-space illusion to be so jam-packed with what you think you have to do and being a little bit happier, a little bit happier, a little bit happier that you simply do not have time to sit and get into an argument with anybody about whether or not Trump is a good guy or a bad guy. Because you realize that it doesn't matter whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. He's the leader of the United States right now. He's our president. So therefore, it behooves you to only see him as a great, wonderful guy. Because that's a part of being happier and happier and happier. It, it does you no good to argue about whether or not he's good or bad. He's already got the job in your timelines that you're in right now. So the best thing you can do for yourself is to only see him as an awesome guy. It does not do you any good whatsoever to argue about whether or not 
um, that whether or not the warming climate change is happening or not doesn't do you any good to have that argument doesn't have do you any good to have an argument over whether or not we're going to get into a nuclear war with Korea doesn't do you any good to have that argument it doesn't it doesn't do you any good to have an argument about anything ever you can have a discussion about things certainly but to have an argument, it is a total waste of time. It is not, well, it's not a waste of time. It will take you down in vibration. It is not good for you. And then we get into, well, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Because from your timelines, with your belief systems, with your knowledge, you can probably argue being right. But does that make you happier? And I'm going to put out there that no, it doesn't. So I would say in my discussions with everybody, um, I don't, I'm not going to argue with anybody. I'm not going to argue. This is who I am. This is what I believe. I died. If you can trump that, <laughs> if you can trump that, come back with better data than I can, uh, give it to me and we'll go from there. But unless your information will help me be happier in the next split second, um, yeah, I probably am not going to want to talk to you. I want happier information. And if you come to me and ask me a question, I want you all to be open for my answer to make you happier and me happier in the next split second. Because that's all I'm interested in. And that's all I'm interested in in interacting with anyone ever. If our communication does not make it so that you're a little bit happier, then what's the point? I'll give you straight up that it is my goal, it is my intent, primary intent, is to be a little bit happier, a little bit happier, and a little bit happier, moment to moment to moment. And I am very self-centered about that. And I have no intention of ever changing it. Ever. Ever. I will turn around and dip down if I read a question or if there's a discussion where the ultimate goal by us, the people that are communicating, is to be a little bit happier, then I'm absolutely up for dropping down temporarily, momentarily. If what I have to say or explain to you will help you be happier and happier, then I absolutely am up for that discussion. But if I can feel like, and they're, about a month ago, uh, this is what happened. A lot of people came on and asked me questions, but when it came down to it, they just wanted to argue their way, that they were right in their misery. It, they were right in that they couldn't be happier. And I'm not going to have those discussions with anybody anymore. If you're stuck in unhappiness and you need something from me that I could help you with that it will explain something so that you could be happier and happier i am absolutely 100 percent on board with that and we'll do it non-stop for you over and over and over but if it's a question of you just proving yourself so you can stay unhappy i am not going to be there with you on that one because remember nobody can keep up with those billions of times that you change a second and the, I'm going to put down below, I can't remember, I think it may be CJ that gave a link to this scientific guy who was talking about that they've proved Planck seconds, that I think he was like talking about trillions of times a second. Okay, we'll just go with a billion. If you change a billion times a second timelines, jumping around with different aspects, there is no way that anybody can keep up with you. Understand me when I say that. No one can stay jumping around a billion times a second and have the same billion times uh, uh, perspective that you do. Do you understand what that means? That means you're in your world alone. You're completely creating moment to moment in this illusion of time space. You are creating your story 
all alone. You're creating it all alone. Now, there are all kinds of creators that are volunteering second, uh, uh, second by second to jump in and play that role and be co-creators in that moment. But then a different aspect of them will sh show up. You see what I'm saying? You've got a bunch of co-creators and we're all one and we're jumping around from aspect to aspect a billion times a second, but you're choosing those billion times a second differently than everybody else around you. So it is your job and only your job to decide how you're going to uh, play that out. I am going to play that out in being happier and happier and happier. And I'm excited with co-creator gods and all the different aspects of those co-creator gods that I'm going to interact with in creating that life, that time, space, illusionary life that I will say belongs to Brenda Yvonne Ballard. But ultimately, nobody will be with each and every moment as I switch around from moment to moment to moment. It's my responsibility. And I'm taking responsibility and have for quite some time now, a decade, that I'm responsible for that. And I intend to be very self-centered in my creationary uh, concern will be being happier and happier and happier moment to moment to moment. So I will interact with you guys in, from that perspective. So what will 5D look like? It'll be free and happy and joyous. I probably will stay here long enough to see all of the natural things that are on the planet. And then the other thing I will do in 5D will be communicate with all the beings until I'm pretty much done doing that. And then I'll step outside of time and space and go outside of this creation um, altogether. Once I'm outside of time and space, then I will go back into now time. And in now time, things are just done differently. But I will sort of kind of go back to what I was doing before I came into the illusion of time space. Even though this is all an illusion. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? Uh, kind of bounced around a little bit there. I, hopefully I gave the answer. Um, I will put a link to that that uh, scientific guy that was talking about Planck seconds to explain that. Uh, yeah. I guess that's it. All right. A little tired, a little foggy. I didn't focus before I did this video. So as I jumped around and talked about a lot of things. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'll talk again later tonight. But first, I'm going to go take a shower and uh, have a talk with water as I'm moment to moment and happier and happier. Hmm. Okay, guys. Huge hugs. I love you guys so much. And I'll talk to you later. Bye now.